assuming that the punchline is that, that it will cause inflammation within the body if we ingest it in any shape or form? It does a lot of things. Um, it can aggravate allergies. So t chemicals yeah. that get into your system can aggravate allergies. Um, eczema, it can also <laughs> cause the inflammation in your system because it's, it's not meant to be there, so your body's trying to protect yourself. Um, it can cause damage to your central nervous system, which will show up in headaches, fatigue, um, tremors. It does a lot to your central nervous system. So yeah. by minimizing chemicals, it does multiple things that are beneficial. You can absorb it through your skin. Yeah, so it comes in, either yeah. you eat it, you ingest it, it lands on your skin, or you breathe it in. Years ago, I used to uh, do, uh, I'm an electrician, I'd go on uh, fire places that caught on fire. Yeah. And after working with that stuff, that bare copper that had been scorched, I started tasting copper. Um, yeah. About, so I, from that time on, definitely wore gloves. Yeah. Taste copper after working with that stuff for about, <coughs> oh, four hours. Yeah. You know, burnt copper. Do you think we're breathing That's chemicals on. in this room right now? Yeah, it's a new carpet. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And it was, I think they call it formaldehyde. Yeah. Well, and it could, candle, you know, and there's some perfect. things, some of the carpets um, off gas, and they may not be off gassing formaldehyde, but that is like a new construction, if you're doing a new construction, to look for products that don't have formaldehyde, whether it's wood or carpeting. There's different carpetings you can get where you're going to minimize those toxicities. Yeah. How about the new car smell? Yeah, so it's the same kind of thing. It's the plastics. You know, new shower curtains, those are high in, in the VOCs. Um, so, you know, the more you can stick with more natural fibers, the less you're going to have. You know, if it's really smelly, be highly aware that that may not be good. And, and the, your first line of defense is opening up windows, getting lots and lots of ventilation in your house. Ventilation is your best way of diluting chemicals in your house. So you mentioned shower curtains. So you buy a shower curtain and you open up in the the house, yeah. and you get it as a plastic sealed wrap, and then you get the initial release. Yeah. The VOCs. Should then you change your procedure and hang the shower curtain outside for several days? Yeah. First one would be to go with more like a nylon shower curtain that doesn't have the high VOCs, the the vinyl okay. ones. I'd go with more of a nylon one. And if you couldn't do that, then before you put it in your house, air it out in your garage for a couple weeks before you brought it into the house. Weeks. <laughs> yeah, I make sure you know, I make sure it's good and aired out okay. before because otherwise you're in an enclosed area. Showers are notorious for being enclosed. You don't have a lot of ventilation. If you have mold in a space, you don't have good ventilation. It's just you know, the ones that say the products are so great, they go, use in a well ventilated area. You're right. Well, if you have mold <laughs> yeah. it's out the door. <laughs> yes. I worked for a company for 40 years, and for about the first 15 years, I worked on office equipment. Mm -hmm. And the uh, chemicals we use for cleaning, all the grease and oil, was trichloroethane. Yep. Not carbon cat. Oh, oh, that's bad enough. And, but we were told every year, you know, it's been scientifically proven that this is not that's harmful. But, I mean, we wash our hands in it and clean it and spray it and everything else. So that account for my mental state right now. <laughs> well, it's funny because when, so when we started our carpet cleaning company, I didn't know anything about toxins. You know, that was 27 years ago. Um, and about, I don't know, maybe 15 years ago, you know, we were cleaning carpets. So I was trying to use the safest products as possible, but we'd start, we'd use like, you've seen people clean carpets and they have like hot water pressure. They're adding the chemicals down, you know, and it's hot, so it's a lot of steam. Well, my husband would be in front of me, and I'd be following him with the hoses to make sure it doesn't ca catch anything. So I was getting this exposure to chemicals. Well, I found that um, my immune system was very depressed. Uh, if I got sick, I'd be down for a couple months because I couldn't shake anything. There were so many things. My skin was turning yellow. My anxiety was through the roof. I was either having anxiety or depression. It was going up and down. 
So it was funny, I didn't realize it at the time, but I started walking every day. I started getting fresh air. I started getting oxygen. I started getting movement. That helped a little bit. And then I changed my diet where I got rid of all processed foods. I stopped eating sugar. I was much more conscientious of not eating crap, basically. And I started eating tons of fruits and vegetables. And that seemed to clean out my system. Now, I'm not saying that's what people should do. That's what I did. All of a sudden, my eyes started getting brighter. I started having more energy. My anxiety dropped from a 10 to probably a 2. Um, I had more vitality. If I got sick, it was like Jack was saying. It was Then it was like a non-issue. Um, it was just amazing what had happened. And then I know I had built up a heavy toxicity for all the chemicals I was around. We were using 111 Tri. We were using a Rusticator, which is, um, I can't even remember, but it's, it's to eat rust and... What is that? That is, well, I know this. If that, that specific product, if you put it on your skin, it would eat until it got to the bone. So, you know, because it was quick. How quick can we get rid of these problems? Um, so we started using milder and milder products, but I know firsthand what, what chemicals will do to a person. But the thing is, you don't have to use any chemicals in the house. And, and actually, this isn't what I was going to talk about tonight, but somehow, <laughs> that's where we are. <laughs> but it just seemed like, you know, um, my dad had a, had a friend who, just an amazing guy, he had black widows outside of his house. And he went with a pesticide to kill the black widows. But he wasn't paying attention, he was so focused on the danger of the black widows, he wasn't paying attention to where the wind was going. And he sprayed himself. And he basically gave himself Parkinson's because of the, of the amount of neurotoxins that were in that pesticide. So anytime you are spraying something outside, you need to be very much more aware. And a lot of things, that, and chemicals specifically, we've been doing it since we were kids. You know, you work with gasoline, so you don't, lose, you don't have the appreciation for how toxic it is because you've been around it, you're so familiar with the scents and the smells that you don't realize how dangerous it is because we're got, it's a, like a habit of being used. So you don't realize how dangerous some of those products are over the long haul, when the less you use, the less toxic it is, the easier it is for your bodies to heal if you're not fighting the chemicals. Because chemicals are, you know, it's going to have to process. It needs to be flushed out of our system somehow. The less chemicals you have in your system, the better. Um, in a house, there's a, there's a lot of different ways to have prevention. One, take off your shoes. Don't have any shoes in your house. Um, by taking off your shoes, you're going to remove probably about 79% of the contaminants that walk in the front door. Some of them being lead, tire treads, um, all the different chemicals, the pesticides from the yards and lawns. So just taking off your shoes is a big one. Like I said, um, wiping down your showers, using microfibers, really minimizing your chemicals. When you do use chemicals, don't spray them over your head. Always wear gloves. Put them on the countertop instead of spray. Always remove them so you're not leaving anything behind. Um, open up your windows. Get some fresh air in your house. That is the best way to dilute the chemicals in a house is by having fresh air in a house. Um, that it, The exhaust fans remove um, moisture and chemicals, and fresh air dilutes them. So that, from my indoor air quality training, that is the best way to treat healthier homes is having a lot of fresh air. Um, it keeps you more vital. So my topic was how to be healthier, happier, more prosperous. In a household, if you're not sick, if you have more energy, if you're not having toxic exposure, you'll be happier, you'll be healthier, you'll be more prosperous because you're not battling that all the time. Um, it, is, it is absolutely a way to be healthier because the environment you're in all the time, specifically your house, will have a bigger impact on your health than pretty much anywhere else because you're exposed to it all the time. So when you're sleeping in it, you're walking in it. So if it's stress because of clutter, it's going to wear on you. If it's chemical exposure, it's going to wear on you. So the healthier you create your house, the healthier you will be. <laughs> it sounds like you're all need to learn a lot. Well, I mean, there is a There's lot, a lot to of stuff about we it. use every day that I'm running through my head. That yeah. It couldn't be any good, you know, I like know. like aerosol for your aerosol. air freshener. Especially air fresheners, aerosols, anything that's in an aerosol is even more because it's an atomizer. It's small, small particulates. It stays in the air longer. So especially air fresheners, candles, scented candles, 
all of those things. And it's funny, um, there's no there's no really protection as far as minimizing the chemicals because it's not really falling. It's not like a personal care product. So they can really sell, say anything. If it says, even a personal care product, if it, if it says fragrance, that is this little protective thing that you can have 3,100 different chemicals in a product that says fragrance. <laughs> that doesn't necessarily mean it's non-toxic, and it may not be the fragrance that's a problem, but there's a lot of carrying agents that want the, the, the chemical to get up into the air and stay up in the air. So those are sometimes the chemicals. Um, in, our, in our house, we had, we were pretty fragrance-free. We were at a, at a house, and they, somehow we ended up with one of their towels. I can't remember exactly how. But it had like laundry detergent and fabric softener left behind. <laughs> well, if you use it all the time, you'll never smell it. You'll never smell it if you use it all the time because we get desensitized. But if you don't you know, use it, you're like, holy cow. So we had this towel, and we thought, well, we'll just wash it and get it clean. We washed it three times, still reeked of this fabric softener. We hung it outside for a week. It still reeked. We Okay, so this is weird. We buried it. <laughs> Sometimes you just get on a roll. We buried it, and finally it composted out. <laughs> but that's how much it took to get that fabric and that scent out of there. Yeah, yeah, have you seen the new ones? They're like, oh, this will last forever. And we're like, oh, So what do you no. wash your clothes with? So I use, a, um, there's a BioClean. You can get it at Fred Meyer, and I use the free and clear one. And I use that, and then as far as a dryer sheet, I have alpaca dryer balls, which is, you also see oh, like wool balls. Breaks it up and stuff. Yeah, yeah. so instead of using um, fabric sheets, I don't use them at all anymore. I just yeah. use that. And what those do, it kind of helps the laundry stay fluffy. It's supposed to help them dry and minimize static clean. I have a little bit more static, but I don't have any of the chemicals. Interestingly enough, when I used to use fabric softener, my hair would get all staticky and it'd be like, Ee. now I have more static when I first take my laundry out of the shower, out of the um, dryer, and shake it out, but I don't have residual static clean. So, I don't know. Yeah. I walk a lot, a lot and I can tell who's doing their laundry. Oh, yeah. It's like hits you. <laughs> and what type of dryer sheets they're yes. using. Because and it's it's heavy. Reeks the whole neighborhood. Yeah, it's a really heavy chemical <laughs> I didn't smell. Know. And if you're not used to it, it's like I didn't know what you said. Could you repeat that name, please, for the... Uh, um, it was BioClean. BioClean. And I like their dish. I like their dishwashing liquid too, um, just yeah, because it doesn't dry out my hands. So How about the uh, replacement for the fabric softener? Oh, the alpaca dryer balls. Alpaca dryer balls. Mm -hmm. How do you spell that? Um, A L P A dryer balls. And I don't know whether you can buy those. I know you can get um, dryer balls that are are um, lin are, uh, lanolin, like um, wool. Those are probably more common. Um, I have a, a lady up in Enumclaw that she, she has an alpaca farm, although she's a little bit erratic because she gets busy with her five kids mm -hmm. and her alpacas. <laughs> but um, I, I know you can get, and I think that Norwex place sells them too. But they last for a long time. Yeah? I hope nobody takes this personal, but since you're a super guardian of chemicals, can I ask you if you think caffeine or some of the caffeine products have chemicals or toxins in them. Because I heard, you know, caffeine, it, if it sets up your percot, it turns into tannic acid. Yeah. It has oils in it. Yeah. It's the oils I'm concerned about. I had, to, I had to stop drinking coffee. It's a long story. And it wasn't easy after a couple of weeks. Um, yeah. And then I got my energy back. Yeah. And, and so it's kind of now just that you showed up as a speaker. That's something, you never talk about the diet stuff that we ingest, in, the liquid. Diets. Yeah. Even soda can have chemicals in it. That's you know, and it. you're absolutely right. You know, there's the chemicals about household kit toxins, yeah, but there's so also the ones. But when I detox my system, <coughs> I was getting rid of the processed food that saved me, oh. um, and it was getting rid of all the chemicals. If you look at something, if you look at something that's boxed, and you start reading the ingredients, <laughs> yeah, you it's know. Scary. It's that scary. Presumes. That is a, and, and like I said, how do you get toxins in your system? You eat them, you breathe them, you ingest them, and you absorb them. So if you got lotions, if you're putting lotions and potions on your body, what are you putting on? I don't use anything but oil on my face. Um, as a matter of fact, as a cleaner, you think, you know, I could have used anything, and I used, I used to have really bad skin. Well, I started using um, just, 
I use coconut oil and avocado oil to wash my face because those two oils are really good at removing so soil. And I knew that from cleaning. Well, it turns out they make great cleaners. So I haven't used soap on my face probably for three years. And then I, when I'm done, I just put oil back on my face so I don't get any toxicity through that. But if you put it on your skin, you might as well eat it because it goes right into your system. So whatever you're using on your skin, using the mild means, there's a great resource. Is anybody familiar with Environmental Working Group? Okay, so write this down, Environmental Working Group. This is a great resource, one of my best resources for minimizing chemical exposure. It's a big nonprofit that does big databases and they're kind of a watchdog for chemicals. So in Environmental Working Group, there's a couple different resources. One of them is a, is a site on there called Skin Deep. Skin Deep is a way of finding whether the products you're using, how toxic they are, or finding safer products. So you can look up your sha shaving cream, shampoo, anything like that, and see what their toxicity rating is. It usually is between zero and 10. 10 being incredibly toxic, um, zero being non-toxic. So you can actually look up the products you're using to see how toxic they are if you want to minimize your chemical exposure. You can also look for shaving creams and see which ones are the safest. So you can look up that, yeah. So what do you use to take a shower? <laughs> I, my, my neighbor actually makes um, their homemade soaps. So I use I, that. So, But my shampoo is just a normal shampoo. You know, sometimes you, you wait, you minimize a lot of chemicals. Sometimes right. you use a, a little bit, but you don't use 50 chemicals. You may use one or two here and there, but really start minimizing those, yeah. What do you use that's non-toxic to address the problem like uh, Hornets' nests and things you normally would have to spray from 20 feet away. Or... So a couple different things. Prevention is a big one of not having things like close to your house where it can get in there. Making sure there's no places for them to enter in the house. Um, closing off any holes. Um, prevention is a big one. Um, if you can get like the hotels, you know, you can get where they'll actually go into it and they're contained, so the chemical's in there and it's contained. That's a bigger one. Um, the other one is is to um, not use an aerosol, more of a pump spray would be the second one, making sure that you have you have full protection on it if you're using anything like that. You're not just going like this, but you actually try to apply it closer. So it's, it's like increments of trying to just minimize your toxicity, but the biggest one is to be aware of it. Um, the other thing is to see if you can find a safer product using essential oils. Sometimes essential oils are very good at those to detriment um, pesticides and stuff. You can use essential oils instead of a pesticide. So a lot of people don't realize that bleach is a pesticide. Yeah? In the environmental thing, uh, years ago, when my children were all playing soccer and football and all that, mm -hmm. And uh, I read an article on the, you take the kids to a play field and you don't see any dandelions, it's probably not a proper place to have children playing. Yeah. 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 Golf courses too, a lot of golf professionals oh, yeah. licking golf balls. Oh. I, I oh, golf once them, a week yeah. and, and uh, it's amazing how they can make that stuff grow like that. I know it. And, and, and you don't see any bugs. You don't see any bugs. You don't and see any And the spiders you see have got three heads. And, you know. <laughs> but, but, but like if you're a golfer, you never want to lick your golf ball. No, no. Man, just, because of the pesticides. I know a lot yeah. of golfers that have cancer. Yeah, wow. so, and ALS is another yeah, thing that a lot of athletes, some athletes get because yeah. of, of the toxics they use on the golf. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a website that and I don't have the information but there is a link that shows all the the I know at least in King County which parks don't have pesticides yeah. um, so there is a, a resource for at least linking which ones don't have the pesticides well, the toddlers out there crawling around you know, yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah. Chemical, and they have a higher well. dilution because they're so little yeah the but, hands you know, in the mouth and just, yeah you know it's unbelievable so on the environmental working group, besides the um, skin deep, there's also like household chemicals. Like if you're looking for bleach alternatives, it'll give you a listing of what are good bleach alternatives. Um, so it gives you a nice little options of, of finding safer products. And like the Clean 15 and the Dirty Dozen of, of fruits and vegetables, it has that too.
I was going to ask you what you use to clean your microfiber cloths with, because they usually say don't use soap. I use a special cleaner, but I was just wondering. You know, my very favorite cleaner, I have so few chemicals in my house. It's amazing how few chemicals, because you just don't need them. But the one I use for a lot of different things is dishwashing liquid. One of the best Which cleaners. Does. One of the best products out there, it's a super concentrate, so you're not wasting a lot of products. You already have it. Um, you want to dilute it, but that's usually a neutral pH, so that's what I would use. Yeah, because you don't want any residue left. You don't want any residue, but it's such a concentrate, so then you need to make sure it's completely rinsed out 100%. I think you said Fred Meyer had a good one you were using. They do. The, I like the BioClean just because some of the, yeah. some of the ones, like uh, seventh generation is non-toxic, but it dries out my hands. Okay. There's a planet, a planet. I think it's called Planet, and that's a good one. Um, Marlene's Market. Marlene's has a lot oh, of good yeah. products. The Fred Meyer Department yeah. has a really good section of cleaners. Yeah. And then you can always go Environmental Working Group. I think they have an app too, but I, it hasn't. I haven't really proved that it's been that successful. Yes. Would you speak about vinegar? You, yes. Vinegar. Okay. Yeah. So vinegar, what that is, is an acid. It's got a pH of three. Um, it's, it's not really a cleaner, it's more of something that's going to remove residue because it's just an acid. Um, because it's an acid, sometimes it's a sneaky acid because you think it's, it's so safe. Um, we were in the stone and tile cleaning company and I got a lot of calls from people using vinegar on travertine floors and mm -hmm. etching the whole floor because mm -hmm. they were trying to be safe. Yeah. So vinegar, because it's an acid, it's not necessarily non unsafe, it just it just needs to be known as an acid. So where I would use vinegar is I would use it in my toilet because vinegar is an acid. It will eat uh, minerals. Um, most minerals like limestone has got an alkaline pH and so vinegar will attack that and help remove that. That's why most cleaners in, in toilets are a strong acid. So when you're using vinegar, it's good for like um, toilets. It's a really good drain cleaner. Um, it's good for removing residue after you've cleaned if you want to rinse it with vinegar. If I'm cleaning like a wool carpet, I'll finish with vinegar because it leaves it in the acidic state. A couple interesting things about vinegar. You never want to clean out a litter box with vinegar because of the ammonia of the, of the litter, of the pee, and the acid. Boom! <laughs> have this lovely thing. Blue also, canopy. vinegar being an acid, you yeah. don't want to clean anything that's acid sensitive, right. which would be right. grout in a shower, um, or limestone, marble, tra uh, travertine, onyx, any of those stones, because it's an acid, it will etch it. Um, so it's good, but it's not, it doesn't ever give any label to tell you what not to use it on. <laughs> so it's kind of one of those sneaky products. I started a whole blog about that one because I had so many people calling me, it's like, my house cleaner used vinegar on my travertine, and I'd be like, oh no! Yeah. When I was single, I used uh, ammonia to clean my bathroom. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Top to bottom. If I could stand it smelling. Oh, yeah. You know, and it seemed to work really yeah, well. Yeah, I'm sure it did. <laughs> it's very toxic. But I don't know what <laughs> good it is for me. Yeah, it's, it's so ammonia is one of those ones. That there's a, there's some, some drugs, or some drugs, some dr uh, um, chemicals are really reactive. And ammonia is one of them, so if it accidentally gets around bleach or an acid, oh, yeah. you have created a really yeah, toxic... Yeah, not to mix them. Yeah, but a lot of people don't. Like I said in the shower, that yeah. happens all the time. Like, okay, you're cleaning your toilet and use something that has a strong acid, but then use an alkaline, like a window cleaner on the outside. You combine it and then you have that chemical exposure, those true reactions. Or you clean a window and then you haven't got the bleach all the way off the countertop you did. You get those chemical reactions happening in houses all the time. Wow. Yeah. So vinegar stimulates the thought that people I see online they, they drink apple cider vinegar. Yeah. yeah. Could you comment on that, please? Well, apple cider vinegar is is thought to um, help alkalize the body um, because it's a strong acid, and your body will kind of counteract it. Um, it's still going to be tough on your travertine floors. It's <laughs> <laughs> like a Geico commercial. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of good for maybe food, but still, it's still an acid. You know, yeah. it's just it's just chemistry. Really, you know, it'd be such a great thing if they taught kids how to do chemistry with cleaning, because cleaning, yeah. all it is, is chemistry. It's awesome. Yeah. 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 We were told by our, we have septic tanks, and we were told never to put mm -hmm. vinegar in the septic yeah. system. Yeah. Yeah, because, because it, it kills the bacteria because yeah. of the strong acids. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, you mentioned the cat litter. Uh, do you have any comments on scented cat litter? Unscented. I, I really recommend unscented because of the scented gets in there and you have yep. another element of chemicals in your house. And really what we're trying to do here is, is create a healthy space for you guys, right. for all of us, to not to have, you know, I, uh, oh. I did, you know, I'm such a nerd. Um, Fred Meyer and Federway, and I'm not picking on that specific because any of the stores will do it, but it had 40, I measured, 46 linear feet in the chemical mm -hmm. section, six shelves high. Jeez. That's how many products are up there. How many I would use out of there? <laughs> Maybe three or four? Awesome. When I could just go get dishwashing liquid and my microfibers? <laughs> I have, I mean, there's no need, really. Yeah? Well, it sounds like the scented litter might be tough on your four-legged critters, too. <laughs> well, it does. Dogs, it is. They're more sensitive to toxins than we are. Yeah. Because they're organic. Yeah. Yeah. You know where I see a lot of um, problems is people using disinfectants. Disinfectants to kill germs. To right. make sure there's no germs. Well, most of the stuff that kills germs is considered a pesticide. Right. Which, okay. which, if you're not using it correctly, you're not only not killing the germs, but you're leaving it behind. Right. Those four-legged mm -hmm. creatures will find it before you do, <laughs> and maybe that's why they end up with tumors. Well, right. they do because they're licking it. Right. So right. anything yeah, that's they, left on the yeah, floor, the, your animals yeah. are going to be licking it and exposed to it. And a lot of our pets are starting to have more cancers, and they're in our home, and they have more stress. Yes. So back to the garage. Yeah. Over the years, we've got a lot of paintings, and my wife loves to test samples. Oh, yeah. So I've got a dozen of these little pint guys, <laughs> and then we've got some gallons that are many years old. So I've got to solidify this latex paint before I can throw in the garbage. Yeah. So I'm using old kitty litter, because our cat passed on years ago. Yeah. So is there, I, mean, I got to solidify, kitty litter seems to do it's that. It's one of the best ways, yeah. So a non-scented kitty litter, kitty litter, that is? That's really what I'd recommend. If you have some that you've already got, and you, you might as well use up what you have, you know, um, just make sure you open up the garage and have well ventilation. Yeah, right. And make sure you're also not getting exposed to a lot of dust, because sometimes kitty litter is really dusty. Um, so just kind of be careful how you're pouring it in so it's not really, or wear a dust mask. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. One thing I did with the paint I wanted to get rid of to clean up my garage, I took the little flats of like a beer box or a Coke box, yeah. lined it with plastic and poured the paint in there, oh. uh, mm -hmm. kind of about a half inch thick, and put it up in the attic of the garage and let it dry out, and That's a good idea. tip it. About three weeks, I was done with about 10 gallons. Oh, good. That's a really, did everybody hear what he said? Yeah. yeah. That's a really good point, because otherwise you get buckets and buckets. And, mm -hmm. and, there, and you all know you can't take it to hazardous waste, so you no. have to dispose of it, throw it away, but it needs to well, be dry. Yeah. 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 The oil is based, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and make sure, honestly, when you start going through the chemicals, I'm, it, to, to take it to the right places and take it to hazardous waste to have it disposed of. Usually, and I'm not as familiar with how King County, but I know like the Auburn Super Mall, you yeah. really just put it, it, you put it in containers in the back of your car, make sure it's not going to fall over. And you just drive up there, ask your zip code, they take it out of your back, give you back your containers and you're gone.